Get your advanced copy of my new book, The Body and the Cosmos at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of September 8, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And it really is a very active astrological week. If you remember last week was active, this week that trend does continue. But by the time we get to the end of the week, we are going to start to notice an important shift. What has been happening is planets moving through the sign of Virgo have one by one either been connecting with each other in what astrologers call a conjunction, which is essentially two planets together in the same part of the sky. And so we've had this energy of this conglomerate of Virgo planets mighty close together in some instances, sharing energy as well. But what these planets have also been doing is reaching out to other power players in the sky. In fact, all the major planets have in one way or another been communicating with each other under a sky like this. However, by the time we get to the end of this week, we are going to start to notice things change. The trend is going to start to change. And that is partly because planets will then start leaving the sign of Virgo, not all of them just yet, but we're going to start to see planets leave the sign of Virgo, move into the sign of Libra. This is the beginning of the energy starting to shift. But more importantly, what we are going to feel most is the full moon. It is going to be at the end of this week that we are going to have a full moon take place in the sign of Pisces. Now, this full moon and part of what makes it so uh, notable is that it is happening mighty close in the sky to Neptune and it is going to be Neptune and Mars that are going to under the light of this full moon perfect a connection in and of themselves with Neptune close to the full moon with Mars close to the Sun and these two planets connecting with precision well, it is very likely that whatever is transpiring in our life, there is a strong emotional component to it. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of hope here as well, but there's also a lot of changeability. A part of the reason is because this is a Pisces full moon and we've got all those planets in Virgo as well. Now it is Pisces and Virgo that are considered mutable. Okay. Those signs are in the modality of mutable, which means that they fall in a place when a season is ending. And so all signs are divided into cardinal, fixed, or mutable. Cardinal starts a season. It is a fixed sign that holds the season. And it is a mutable sign that represents seasons beginning to change. And so we consider these signs one with some flexibility, some changeability. And so you think about all this energy in mutable signs, and it speaks powerfully to a sense now that we know that things may not be as solid as we might like. There isn't a lot of security or consistency when we've got so much mutable energy playing out, but what there is, is adaptability. There is the potential to see what is going on, what the options are, what it is that could be possible if we entertain different scenarios and to recognize our choices and to see that there are plenty of choices available to us. Now, this full moon though is going to emphasize the emotionality of this time. Pisces energy in and of itself can be highly emotional. It is one uh, that is ruled by Neptune. Neptune is God of the seas. If you think about the sea, right? It's constantly shifting. There's a constant wave playing out. Sometimes those waves can be stronger than others. Now you look at Mars. Mars brings heat, brings intensity, okay? And it brings that much more an emphasis on what could change. And so in our own lives, in at least one area of life, it may feel as if things are changing, as if emotions are running particularly high. I would say with this full moon late in the week, it may not be the time to have important conversations. But I do think that with a full moon like this, a lot of what does transpire may feel downright karmic. 
it may feel like an opportunity to actually address the variety of what we do feel, what we can feel. We may have to look at some of our own frustrations and work towards changing them. Piscean energy is one of heightened compassion as well, but it can also be given to uh, some sense of illusion. And that's where we are going to have to be a little bit careful with this. It is that sense of what we are wanting, what we are hoping, what we are feeling that can sometimes color what we actually believe is taking place. Now, I don't think that this is going to be that likely because thankfully, We've got some particularly encouraging conversations happening, celestially speaking, simultaneously. One of the things that stands out to me under the light of this full moon is that the sun will speak in supreme harmony with Pluto at this time. The full moon in harmony with Pluto. Uh, this can bring an energy of perception, of truth, of a willingness to understand where our power is and to take those steps. Now you add to this the fact that Mars will be speaking in supreme harmony with Saturn as well earlier in the week. Now this can bring some sense of stability. Whereas just Mars and Neptune together, well, it can feel like our own emotions, our own hopes, our own desires are taking us on a little bit of a, a tide, if you will, like the tides coming in, the tides coming out, and a lack of stability could be there it is Saturn that brings stability. It is Saturn that brings maturity to ensure that whatever it is we're hoping for, we understand the steps that could get us there. We understand what could be possible and we also understand how it is that we are going to act in a way that allows us to affirm a healthy sense of self-respect. You know, that is one of the understandings of Saturn that I think isn't emphasized enough. We often look to Saturn uh, in terms of how Saturn can represent uh, limitations, but also success. It can represent responsibility, but also obligation. But the thing is that Saturn speaks to action. You know, this idea of faith without works is dead. It is in taking our hopes, our aspirations, and translating it into action and into lived experience, that bridge that we create between the two. Well, it is on that bridge that we will find self-respect. It's not necessarily about what it is that we achieve, uh, what if we get what it is that we aim for, but it's about being on the path, knowing that we did our part to get us towards that more idealized future, or even just a goal, to move ourselves towards a goal. Now, whether or not the outcome is there, it is in the action itself that we find ourselves and that we find a self to respect and in some cases respect deeply at that. And so it is gonna be Saturn that is a reminder of this. But this is gonna be energy that we will have to consciously tap into, this beautiful energy of Saturn and of Pluto that is playing out at the start of the week, Mercury speaking in supreme harmony with Pluto as well. And so it can feel as if, for the collective in particular, there's a sense of powerful communications and conversations and connections happening at this time. This can feel as if we are getting news and we are all talking about how things are changing in a way that empowers us, but we do have to be careful. There's a lot of Neptunian energy around at this time, which says that all may not be as it seems on the surface and just when something looks like a sure thing, it may not be. I've been thinking about this idea of what is it that brings consistency in life? What is it that brings stability? And I actually think that this is a lesson for a lot of us out there, possibly a lesson for our times. I remember many, many years ago when I was a very, very young lady, when I was a teenager, and I remember I had a doctor, he was uh, phenomenal, can't remember his name right now, but the one thing he told me that always stuck with me, and I remember him telling me that, you know what, education is something that no one can ever take from you. It's the only thing that no one can ever take from you. And as I've grown, I've come to understand that that's not necessarily about formal education, right? Yes, of course, it's nice to have the degrees or whatever. If you've got uh, Capricorn energy in your chart, if you've got some Sag energy in your chart, maybe that matters to you. But I see that more as experience, right? No one can take your experiences from you. 
what it is that you've proven to be true for yourself, what it is that you come to learn about yourself, the things that you demonstrate, the, the qualities that you show, the character, the kindness. These are things that are always with you. They are eternal. And I do believe as well that these set the foundation to the karmic blessings that we reap as well in this lifetime and possibly because I am so mystically inclined beyond this lifetime as well. It is in the energy that we give, especially when it is an energy of kindness and energy of love. It's, it's not about, you know, believing something that isn't true, right? It's not about being self-sacrificing unless you are so inclined with Pisces, there can be that inclination to be self-sacrificing. But I do think that with all the Virgo energy that is playing out this week, well, chances are we're also going to have that measure of groundedness as well. We're going to be able to see what sacrifices are worth it and what may not be and make wise decisions in the process. With all this Neptunian energy, it could be that for some of us, we are realizing what's working and what isn't. And while it might be difficult for some, realizing what isn't working may not be the thing to pick up just now. It's there, right? As many things are always there, you can come back to it at some point. But realizing what it is that you are going to release to allow space for something else to enter, that can also be very powerful. That can be a powerful spiritual experience as well. Understanding what direction you're going in is just as meaningful as understanding what direction that maybe right now you're not meant to go in. And the more it is that we hold on, the more it is that we try, the more it is that we, we strive and ache and fight to hold on to something that wants to leave our life. Well, that's when we make things difficult for ourselves. I've said it before. I know I've said it on social media. That's for sure. What is for you will be for you. And this is something that my mom tells me to this day uh, quite a bit sometimes. What is for you will be for you. Yes, there is a lot of joy and exhilaration when there's something you want and you take action and you go for it, right? There's this sense of agency that happens there, a sense of aliveness that can be a high in and of itself. There are times when we are asked to be a warrior, a spiritual warrior. This is a sacred archetype and we're asked to summon this archetype. But there are also times when we are asked to be the sage, right? We are asked to be the hermit. We're asked to accept to cultivate wisdom, to be on our own. And there are times when we are asked to understand that some of the best things, some of the greatest things that are for us have a way of just showing up. Now, absolutely, there are times when we want to summon the sacred energy of the spiritual warrior. If we're fighting for ourselves and for our life and for our happiness, absolutely. But it's amazing how when it is that we allow happiness, when we allow ourselves to be in the moment, which I think is one of the, the higher spiritual understandings of the energy of Virgo and the higher spiritual understanding of this time that we're in right now. With all this Pisces and Virgo energy, it is Virgo that says be in the moment. The moment is where the power is. The moment is where the sacred is. And the more it is that you can fully be here, right here, right now, the more peace you will find, the more effective you can be. And then we have Pisces, right? And that's all about the vision and the idealism and the dream. But we need that too. We need to have hope. We need to have inspiration. We need to have compassion for ourselves and for others. Yes, demonstrating our faith is wonderful. It's empowering. But at the same time, when it is that we are not able to demonstrate, it's enough to believe. It's enough to believe in yourself, to believe in your future, to know that you are headed in a direction of greater love and greater wisdom as well. What I love about this week for us, look, there is so much happening celestially. I feel like I've just barely touched on it. By the time we get to the end of the week, like right after that uh, full moon that takes place right around uh, Friday or Saturday, depending on where you are on the planet, that's when that full moon is going to peak. Well, it is immediately after that Venus and Mercury both are going to leave the sign of Virgo and move into the sign of Libra. This is going to be quite the shift for a lot of people out there. 
especially considering how much uh, strong Virgo energy we have had over the course of the last few weeks. Um, this conglomerate of Virgo energy, as I've been calling it. So we go from seeing the sacred in the everyday and being asked to pay attention to what's in front of us right here, right now. We go from this sense of focusing on uh, precision, focusing on details, putting in the time, putting in the work, which is part of what Virgo energy represents. And instead we move towards an energy that's an air sign. And it's about thought, it's about mind, it's about communication and connection. It's more lofty by its nature in and of itself. Air is an energy that is more lofty than earth that Virgo represents. Earth is a lot more practical. Air is about ideas. It's about the next thing. It's about catching a wave, if you will, of mind. But it is also the sign of Libra that is very social. It can be diplomatic. It can be an energy that is about seeing things from a different perspective. And it is about compromise as well in its highest understanding. And so with Venus here, we are going to find a love of compromise. Now I'm looking at this energy in and of itself, okay? All else being equal, giving you a little bit of a heads up. As planets start moving into the sign of Libra, all of these beautiful harmonious connections that we've had uh, while planets were moving through Virgo, mainly I'm thinking about beautiful connections planets had with Saturn, planets had with Uranus, uh, planets had with Pluto. Well, it's the Saturn and Pluto especially uh, that I think will be intriguing as we move later into the month and these Libra planets start speaking with Saturn and Pluto in conversations of tension. So that's why I say all else being equal. We'll talk about that when we get there because that can be a little bit of a reality check for us. But what is empowering about right now as these planets move into the sign of Libra is that there is that potential there to see others with eyes of love, to see ourselves with eyes of love, to be willing to listen to another perspective, to be willing to find common ground. This is the highest potential of Libra energy, and it's a potential that could be available to us at this time. But for all that, we have such a powerful sky playing out right now, and there is easy power when we need it. The more it is that we are willing to be in the present moment, focusing on what is in front of us, whether it is to do or to feel, well, the more likely it is that we are going to find ourselves grounded in genuine inspiration. The more it is that we do live in the present moment, the less power that the past or the fears of the future have in our lives. And it is in the present moment that we are able to find a genuine sense of contentment, a, a peace, a purpose, and genuine empowerment as well. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm truly so grateful for it. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Thank you so much to everybody who joined me live on Facebook or the replay here on YouTube uh, for last week's forecast, celebrating my anniversary, celebrating uh, 13 years as a full-time astrologer. Thank you for all the love, all the support, all the encouragement. It means so much. Uh, thank you for ushering me to 13 years for being a part of that and uh, to the next 13. And of course, to my friends who joined me, uh, I'm grateful for them as well, who joined me on that live stream that I did. And so I did have some announcements that were deeply meaningful to me. And again, thank you for the love. So one of the big announcements that I had very near and dear to my heart was about my next book. So this is the draft copy. The draft copy has come uh, for my next book and it is called The Body and the Cosmos. Um, and this book, um, it means a lot to me. It is essentially an exploration of our uh, connection to the sky, how every part of our body is uh, in some way connected to the cosmos. And it was actually uh, a book by Plato called Timaeus, uh, one of the works of Plato rather. And it is in Timaeus that 
Plato um, explores a mystical understanding of the cosmos and our interconnection to the cosmos. And I used that uh, work by Plato as a jumping off point uh, to make connections to an astrological sky that much more. And so if you get a chance to read Plato's Timaeus, it is really incredible. It is um, an understanding of, uh, of how it is that the, uh, that the world came to be. Uh, the source of the world and what he called vital chains. Now, this is stuff I actually spoke about in uh, the introduction to astrological magic class that I did over summer school. So if you'd like to learn more about that. But yes, it was in reading that book that I felt inspired uh, to further explore the sky and our connection to it. And so each section is divided into the different signs. And what we have in the different signs is the contemplation, right? Looking at Plato's ideas and uh, looking at what we understand about the different signs and the interconnection there. Uh, specific muscles are mentioned, specific exercises are mentioned as well. And then what we also have is each sign has its own meditation also. And so all of that is in the book. I'm working with an artist to finalize the cover. This is not gonna be the final cover. For the draft copy, I did wanna have this ready. And so if it is that you would like an advanced copy of this book, uh, you get it on my website with lots of free gifts as well. Advanced copies are only available in the month of September. And so printing goes October 1st, and it is gonna be uh, right around Halloween that shipping is gonna go out of advanced copies along with special gifts. And this book is gonna be available on Amazon on December 8th. And so that is gonna be the official launch of this book on December 8th. And so again, advanced copies come with gifts. So one of the gifts that you get with the advanced copy that you purchase on my website, NadiaShaw.com, is this pendant. It is uh, silver plated. It says the universe is wise and loving. I used to have this on sale on my website last year. It was priced at $9.95 and you will get this pendant whether you want to wear it or use it on your altar. It will be sent to you as a gift. Uh, what you are also going to get is guided meditations, audio meditation downloads. And so there is a pack of meditations. As I said, uh, this book has meditations for each and every sign. And so what you get is recordings of those meditations. If you just want to listen to them and you want to be guided, um, the meditations that are in this book that I've written in this book are going to be available as audio downloads. The pack of 12 signs is going to be worth, it's going to be priced at $19.95. Now that's going to be available for sale right around Halloween as well, but you get it included in uh, your package for the advanced copy of this book. You also get a handwritten card from me as well, uh, where I thank you personally with your name. I get you a signed copy of this book as well, and I will ship these out again right around Halloween is when shipping is gonna go out for the advanced copies. If you'd rather wait, well then it'll be on Amazon. December 8 is the official launch of The Body and the Cosmos by me. And again, thank you so much for the love for all the people who've already ordered advanced copies. Uh, this is very meaningful for me on a lot of levels. So uh, one of them is that I have loved books all my life. I remember as a little girl, I loved reading. Um, this was before the internet really took over the world. And I remember I could lock myself in my room and just read for hours. And so to now have books, right? This is gonna be my second book to actually have books in the world. It means so much to me. It means a lot to me as well to contribute to the canon of astrology. And what I mean by that is, you know, I am uh, very interested in contributing something unique or something different. And I feel like with this book, I get to do that. In my last book, a lot of people have written about, and there are a lot of books out there that tell you about how to read a natal chart. Um, so an introduction to natal chart reading, but what I felt made that book unique was that I actually guide you through the historical and philosophical development of astrology. I, I take you from the roots and usher you into today. And also in that book, in my first book, Astrology Realized, is that I encourage you to cultivate a, a personal relationship to the planets. Um, it's not so much about saying, okay, Venus is an Aries equals this. It's not about a cookbook that I present you with but rather I'm more interested in helping you to understand uh, the Venusian energy within you 
and what that might feel like if it was in the sign of Aries or what that would feel like if it was in the sign of Taurus. So in this way, I felt like I made a unique contribution with my first book uh, in that way. Now with this book, I do feel like I'm making a unique contribution as well, which is very important to me by connecting Plato's ideas uh, to an astrological sky. And so I, um, you know, this matters to me a lot. It matters to me a lot to do something that I feel not only is going to inspire people who get it now, but will be meaningful uh, in the fullness of time. So after I've left this body and, you know, it's just my, uh, my descendants who are kicking around, hanging around, um, whether it's my astrological descendants, right? So the astrologers that are to come, uh, to be able to offer them a unique perspective, something different, um, that means a lot to me. And so again, I was inspired by Timaeus, by Plato, and uh, I, from there, used that as a jumping off point to create astrological uh, associations. And from there, we have a book. We have a book called The Body and the Cosmos by me, by Nadia Shaw. And I hope you absolutely love it. Again, advanced copies come with gifts and link is in the description below. I hope you absolutely love it. I, I hope it helps you to feel the cosmos and to feel the sky more deeply within. Synchronicity University is right around the corner with the autumn session. The autumn session is gonna start in about a month and you can log on to synchronicityuniversity.com and sign up for the autumn session, whether it's a single class, whether it's the whole thing, join us live. We've got several amazing classes coming up. Thank you so much to all the students who have already registered. I appreciate your trust so much. So some of the classes are gonna include Jupiter, through the signs and houses in the astrology chart, Pluto in the astrology chart, uh, astrological magic part two and three. So part one was done uh, back in the summer school. Again, you can download that on my website, but this is gonna be part two and part uh, three. And we're gonna have an introduction to electional astrology. And then of course our bonus class where you get to ask your follow-up questions and we get to hang out. So it's gonna be a lot of fun, a six week journey that we are gonna to share together. And you can learn more about that and sign up and learn about the classes that will be happening. See the classes that have already happened that you can download on my website, nadiashaw.com and synchronicityuniversity.com. Live events, there's lots of live events coming up. Um, I just wanna give you a little bit of a heads up. I'm gonna be really more specific soon, uh, but here are some things to look out for in uh, January, of course. I'm gonna be speaking in Fort Lauderdale, and I'm also going to be on a cruise event uh, that I'm really looking forward to. It is love, joy, hope, and transformation, and it is a journey that we're all gonna go on together as part of understanding our changing times and being part of bringing love and wisdom in our own lives and in the lives of others. And so I look forward to sharing that journey with you. Thank you to all the people who have already signed up. And if you are so inspired to be on a cruise with me and other phenomenal astrologers as well, you can learn more in the description below. In May, I am going to have speaking engagements in Toronto and in Seattle as well. I will be back in Seattle with the NORAC conference and lots more events uh, coming up to be revealed. I'll be in Istanbul in March as well. So there's lots and lots of events to look forward to and I'll be sure to share details very soon. And finally, my final thing is I want to say a very big happy birthday to my mom. It's my mom's birthday as we start this week. Happy birthday to my beautiful mother. Uh, my mother and I have a very interesting synastry. Her Jupiter conjuncts my moon. That's the main thing I know. My moon is in her first house. Uh, and so she really is one of uh, the most brilliant people I've ever met. Uh, passionate, uh, introspective, and loving. And I feel very, very blessed to have her as my mom. So if you get an opportunity, and if you feel so inspired, uh, please do take a moment to say happy birthday to my mother. Happy birthday, mom. I love you so much. And thank you for being my number one fan. My mom and my dad, for that matter, huge fan. They're the presidents of my uh, fan club. Everywhere they go, they're giving out my cards and things. I, 
I can't tell you how many times when I'm visiting them that I'll go and see a stranger and they'll be like, oh, your mom told me this and told me that. And, da, da, da. and so it really is so beautiful to be so loved. So happy birthday, mom. I hope you're enjoying yourself and you're enjoying your day. And I love you so much. And thank you. Thank you to all my amazing friends and fans out there. I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, thank you for being part of, uh, of my spiritual journey, for seeing me as some uh, part of yours. And again, thank you for all the celebration and all the wonderful wishes that you guys sent for my anniversary. And of course, for my new book, The Body and the Cosmos. The Body and the Cosmos, my brand new book. And again, advanced copies are available now on my website, NadiaShaw.com. I hope you absolutely love uh, this book. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.